As a owner that just wants a well-behaved dog, it is an absolute nightmare. Awesome dog. We love everything about him, but with other dogs, loses his mind. And we've been watching your videos like crazy. So we have, you know, the collar, um, the dog tra, and then we have the Herm Springer too. And we've been working with those the last month or so. And he can actually walk by people now. He never could before. So I feel comfortable with that now. But Good. dogs, I feel like, is a whole nother animal. No pun intended. I want to understand how to help him realize that like hey it's okay mm -hmm. um they're not gonna come get you like i i got you well, we did r plus training for the first 10 months and we're getting nowhere we spent like thousands of dollars on trainers um, we tried everything i was super anti-prong collar um did not want to do that at all and then like i just hit a wall got super frustrated um wanted to help him this was the only thing that worked so the transition going from positive only to using positive punishment uh, in conjunction with positive reinforcement yeah. has expedited the progress. Oh my God, yeah. I was super hesitant to do that at all. Like I just didn't want to. When you Google how to train a shepherd, they like fear monger you into saying like, you do not punish a shepherd. If you use prong collars or shot collars or whatever else it is, like you ruined your shepherd. So I went for 10 months like thinking that and being like, I can't hurt him, I can't, everything has to be positive, everything has to be good, and it, and it is, because now, like, I was never able to tell him, don't do that, because it was always like, well, you can't yell, you can't say anything, you can't, like, correct him, whatever, because he's gonna, like, snap at you, or do all this stuff, and I'm just like, then how do I tell him what, what he's doing is wrong? And he's not food motivated, so then they were like, well, just, like, hand feed him his own food, so we tried that, but then he wouldn't eat his breakfast, yeah. <laughs> and we're just like, what else do you do here? That's the scary thing about the internet is if you want to think the earth is flat, you can find some proof that it says that. And yeah. if you want to believe that the dog only responds to those certain things, you can find that too. So it's yep. like, that's and why I- And you have I, both sides telling the other side that yeah. they're terrible. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I, yeah, <laughs> Like exactly. all R plus people are like, oh, you guys don't know how to train dogs. Like you got to be able to tell them what's wrong. And all the like balanced trainers are like, they're just like, oh, you guys are evil. Yeah. You like punish your dogs and your dogs actually hate you. <laughs> Just like, yeah. as a owner that just wants a well-behaved dog, it is an absolute nightmare. And it's just like, some of them won't even come to our house because they're like, oh, he's not ready for that yet. So then like, we're trying to figure out how to, like, yeah. how to do what they're telling us to do. And it's just, totally. I, I like would walk him down the street and there would be a runner or a person and they were like, get away as fast as you can. Like, I'd be like sprinting away with him, like hide behind a tree. We see this a lot. If you guys are working with a dog trainer and you're finding little to no results, especially if you're spending months and months and months and lots of money, there's a really good chance that maybe that trainer is not the right fit for you and you should find some sort of alternative trainer to help you in your progression. And we'd like to do volunteer work with him, but a lot of them say, obviously, they have to be human neutral and dog neutral in order to do that. And so we're obviously not in a place where we can do that right now. <laughs> right, well, you're dealing with a, a young dog intact and if he's got some working tendencies that line into him he's going to be busy 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 yeah so all of those three combines like intact young german shepherd working <laughs> are all shades of give me something to do yeah and if you don't outlet that properly and give it nice structure then what happens is is you start seeing some of these some of that stuff start stemming off which is what you're dealing with with the vocalization so you'll notice when you go to higher stimulated areas like this, where there's other dogs that are gonna be moving around, or you go to a park, or there's a runner, he's gonna to start to build and combust, and then he's gonna wear that combustion with vocalization. So really what you wanna do is compartmentalize all of his behaviors to make sure that you can give him a job. Have you done any tug work with him before? So getting a tug or some sort of motivation out to engage with the dog is a great opportunity for you to play with your dog, but keep your dog engaged and make sure that the dog is focused on something alternatively than just barking at another dog. Good boy. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Good. So there's a, there's a bit of an art to <laughs> playing uh, tug with the dog and you have to, it, it takes a little bit of time. It's some finessing here. <laughs> Good man. Yes. So see, Taylor walked in and- I was gonna say, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, good boy. 
Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah. <laughs> good boy. So see how he's checking her out? Yep. He's not barking because he's got a ball shoved in his mouth. <laughs> All right. So a couple things. Um, like I said, because of his working line, uh, the ball, the tug, and object is probably going to be the best thing to pay him with as well as to play with him with. That's just what they love the most. And it gives you an opportunity to actually work with the dog. So Brittany just walked in, which is a new person. Yeah. And then Hawk, the dog over there, just got fired up. And so he looked at Brittany, he looked at Hawk, and now, now I'm just saying, hey buddy, let's make some better decisions. Yeah, good boy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he's not flipping his God. mind right now. So I know I'm a big part of his nervousness too. Yeah. Because I get super nervous, um, like not knowing how he's going to react. So right. like I can feel it. So I, I understand it goes right down the leash and he can feel it too. Yeah. So I try to like keep my composure, but he does much better with my husband on a leash with other dogs than me. So if you're on the leash with him and you start doing something different for whatever reason and he cues that it's the other dog that's making you do that, it also goes into, well, I got to protect you now because you're nervous. It's all a thing. So I like using the toy when possible because it's between you two. You well, guys it seems are like he enjoys it so much. Definitely. Too. Like you can tell he's just like, oh, I'm yeah. excited. And with food, he's like, that's cool. Like yeah. I got a treat. I like those, but yeah. this is more fun. I, I have a, a couple different options for tugs, but the ball is nice because most dogs do like the ball and you want to keep it on a rope so you have leverage to play with him. And it's not going to be a keep away game, it's a it's a reward system. A, a lot of people think that playing tug of warrior with your dog is trying to get it, take it away and possess it. That'll actually really uh, make the dog want to never give it back to you. Really when you're playing with him and then he drops it on command, you're immediately releasing it again and you're you're trying to make it fun for for both of you. Good. Good heel. Chief heel. Good heel, buddy. Good heel. Chief heel. Good heel. Good. Heel. Good heel. Now you can just draw back heel. and you Chief. can draw heel. back, yep, and then you can pay him with the ball. Good. Chief. Okay. Good. Good job. I think that was one of the main missing pieces where just letting him, making it very clear yeah. like when that your break is basically. Yeah. For me, just to like make it easier, I would always have him sit and that would remind me that like, okay, ne next is okay and then he can go and do like right. on our walks and stuff. But like this type of thing is... You want to make it more explosive. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just like any type of sports drill or any type of uh, impulse control drill to really keep you on your feet. Like, it's duck, duck, goose. Like, you never know when it's going to happen. And when it does, boom, you got to be ready. So if you put it into more of a routine, it's like, do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, I'm sitting. Okay, yeah. you're going to... Like, just make it more like... Yeah, exactly. Make it more explosive for him. So he's constantly like, is it, is it now? Is it now? Is it now? I think it's now. Okay, it's not now. And he's just constantly... Uh, anticipating things, because then he's gonna be really explosive. From the training aspect of it, we couldn't ever get him to be like, oh, I'm super excited about this. It was always like, all right, okay, I'll sit, okay, I'll do this. And like, we found out that toys worked really well, so we started with doing with that, which increased his motivation a little bit, but we, yeah. we don't see that explosive, like, oh, I'm really excited about yeah. this, or oh, I really wanna do this. Are you tired now? So when he gets like that, that's where you just take, you, you would just put the toy away, like yeah. if you had a pouch, or a shirt or a hoodie that you can pop it in. Yeah. Basically, it's the same thing that like they do in, when they do personal protection or police work, is as soon as the dog either drops the toy, lets go of the toy, or shows any sign of disinterest, whoosh, goes away Okay. immediately. So it basically tells them that as soon as you disassociate yourself with this in any way, shape, or form, it, can, it goes away. There, when you were talking and he's kind of just like chirping at it, whoosh, nope. It's okay. gone. You're either obsessed with this or you don't get it. And that's what creates working dogs, police dogs, personal protection dogs, any type of ring dog. They have to be on 100% all the time, like full throttle RPMs are just blasting. And the minute they show like a half mass, gone. Well, yeah, I think that was definitely a big thing that we just didn't understand is how to motivate him without food. Because right. everybody's always about food, which is understandable and works for a lot of dogs but not for him. <laughs> well, the problem is, is it also doesn't discourage behavior in reality. So we can talk about, well, counter conditioning and removing him from the situation or literally sprinting the other direction at 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah. in the morning when there's a runner around, yeah. but it doesn't discourage the behavior that's happening. So when we use positive reinforcement, we're adding something to the equation to simply reinforce something to say, I want you to do this. This is encouraged behavior. But on the other end of the spectrum of positive punishment, it's the same exact thing as we're discouraging behavior when it happens to say, that's, I don't want that to happen. Anyway, it makes sense that you're coming full 
circle now and you're finding balance, which millions of other people do at some point, yeah. and <laughs> you, you immediately see results. We had this one uh, lady come in from Michigan with a German Shepherd. Her trainer said that if she ever used a prong collar on her dog, it would shut her dog down forever and her dog would hate her forever. Her dog would never be the same. After she left here, she expedited in three days faster than she did with a year working with another trainer that was telling her to never use any type of correction to teach her dog what she can't do. It doesn't make sense. Why, what, why am I turning my back to a dog that is maliciously lunging at people? I can't, that doesn't, and, and she said, I, I got sick of just cutting up hot dogs six in the morning so and my hands, my yeah. And yeah. her dog was, you know, having GI issues and I'm like, yep. Just correct the behavior, man. <laughs> Just get it over with. It's one and done, you well, know? That episode is why we came out here. Oh, that was the one that you saw? That was the episode. We're from Michigan. See? And their dog was the same as our dog. So you know. And she literally, like, spoke to me. She was like, we yeah. did R plus training for this many months. Like, she was me, right. <laughs> like, a month ago. <laughs> like, right. it's just like, okay. Like, yeah. I, at that moment, we were like, this is what we need to do. It makes sense. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys haven't heard, we have created an official No Bad Dog Army Members Club. It's a very unique opportunity to join a community of dog owners such as yourself that are trying to learn. It's very empowering, it's very motivating, it's certainly inspiring. If you go in there, you guys will be able to see everybody helping each other out, uploading videos. You guys are also going to get a ton of unreleased stuff from me, unreleased podcasts. You guys are going to get full length videos. You're watching a 10, 15 minute video here on YouTube. We're releasing the full hour and plus all on there. It's $19.99 a month. It's super inexpensive. It's an official program that we're continuing to put stuff on there and growing. It's a lot of fun. Click the link in the description below to join. Good heel. Good job. Good boy. Yeah. Yo, uh -uh. Uh -uh. Nope. Good boy. Heel. Good job. Good heel. Good boy. Heel. Good. Uh -uh. Right now, what we're working on is calming some of this handling down. So before what we were doing, if you guys were watching, is when I said, okay, move around, we were very like sprinting back and forth. So it's very natural and normal for people to do that because your pace is matching what your brain is doing. If you ever want to know what somebody's thinking, just watch what their body's doing, right? Yeah. Like you can tell if somebody's sitting down listening versus somebody sitting down sleeping versus somebody like, if your brain is, like if you're on the phone, right? We're doing this, <laughs> like we're always like doing, because our body is kind of following suit to our conversation in our head. You want to decrease that by being as calm as possible. Heel. Good heel. Good job. Heel. Good. Good heel. Chief heel. Good heel. One thing a lot of dog owners do, especially if they're a little nervous about handling the dog around other dogs, is, is they tend to wear their anxiety or their stress on the leash or verbally out loud. So if you watch her, she's going really fast around the room and she's also over phrasing. Good, 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 good. And that's what I call thinking out loud. Maybe she's a little nervous or she's anticipating reaction and it's coming out of her mouth, which ultimately will end up making the dog more nervous than necessary. for that calmness. Good boy. Well done. Good. Yeah. But just remember, because he's young and this is all new to him, it's, it's not going to be perfect. Patience. Yeah. Patience and expectations is he's doing really good for a very vocal dog. He's chirping a little bit, but nothing overwhelming and okay, we got to leave the room. But that was my main first goal with him is to get him figure out a routine and something that we can do to calm him down so okay. he's not so squeaky. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to sit here. I've done this too sometimes where I rewatch videos and I'm like, man, I should have just let a dog soak. Where I'm just too busy on trying to distract or I'm too busy trying to correct. And sometimes you just do this and this is all you need because this is actually what you're working for anyway, <laughs> right? It's, it's a socialization thing. So as she gets closer and as she gets more activated over there and starts moving around, what he's going to do is he's going to go, oh, 
and he's gonna get another smell of her, and then you're like, hey, come on over here, and then he lays back down. The whining is just excitement. Yeah, he's just like, did you see her? Did you see her? Did you see her? And he's just... And we, we were talking about that in the car on the way back earlier. We're just like, we get, it's very easy to tell with him when it's like, I'm about to blow versus just chatting. It's nice that we kind of realize that. We never yes. thought about it before. So you yes. don't really think about it. But was about to be that yeah, but everything was like, ah, yeah. but now it's like, okay, he's just talking. And the more you do this and the, the more you let it soak, the better it's going to get. Now, the only realistic thing to add to this mix is that not every dog is going to do this. So if you get another dog that's makes him look silent then you then you just avoid it that's all because it's not it's not good it's not good learning like this is all good this is all really good so it's 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 chirp 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 because he's like what are you who are you how are you blah, 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 right and he's just thinking out loud it, once it gets explosive and, and really vocal and overpowering and you can't hear yourself think that's where you're like hey knock it off what are you doing but even if he gets up and does this like you can just post up right there and don't yeah that's it yeah we're practicing this so it's like it's the practice of nothingness Really. And sometimes you have to practice it. It's bizarre, but you do. Chief, sit. Yes, good sit. Good sit. Well done. Chief, chief. Yes. Oh, 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 good man. Good man. And so that's where you would pay him once he does good with that. Yep. What's the difference between like yesterday yes. we were talking about like not talking to him too much and then today being like kind of that middle ground where... Yeah. Yesterday you were very like heel, good heel, good heel, good heel, good heel, good heel. Today it's Indy walks by and he's like, ooh, a leaf. <laughs> then you would say you would say good good sit or good down or whatever the heck okay. he's doing. He At, actually did something right. right there. Living the life of a reactive dog owner, you forget sometimes to just let them do this. Like, this is great. Same thing with her and same thing with butter, but sometimes you just if they just Lay down, you're like, I'm just gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna soak this in. And every now and then you might just pay him for doing this. The issue was, is we didn't really understand what the issue was, um, what his motivations were. He would bark and go crazy at other dogs. Anything new, anything surprising, anything like exciting and being able to understand why he was reacting the way that he was. Understanding like, hey, is it like aggressive? Like he wants to go after someone or is it he just doesn't know what to do with his body and with his emotions. And what we found out was that it's a lot of that. That's his way he, he expresses himself and understanding why he's doing what he's doing allows us to be better owners and better trainers with him. Every trainer has a different method. And I think, you know, this was our first shepherd and we wanted to do what was best for him and um, just did a ton of research and tried a ton of different things and we saw that video on the YouTube channel of the couple from Michigan with the same dog with the same issues and we were like that it just clicked it made sense um, so we were like we, we have to come out here we have to give it a shot because um, we just wanted to do what was best for him that's all it's about you have these expectations of what it'll be like not only for like with Tom um, but with your dog and you're just like ah, I don't know how it's gonna go um, but to understand and, and know, and I knew that it was me and my anxiety that was causing that reaction at the end of the leash, but to, to understand it, to see it, and to see what he's capable of um, gives me so much more confidence. Because I knew that, I just didn't know how to bring it out in him, and this allowed me to bring it out in me and him. Um, the fact that we could get within two feet of a dog is nuts to me. Um, and so, and that's what we wanted to do because we wanted to be able to have him human neutral, dog neutral, to be able to do work with him. Um, and I feel 100% confident doing that now. Three days ago, absolutely not. We wouldn't even take him to the park because we just didn't know what to do.